Good afternoon and welcome. We are here in studio. We're going to talk some sports with Val. We've had a, a little bit of time off here, Val, but kind of thought we'd have some, some spring sport news to bring you here by now, but uh, Mother Nature has just uh, not been cooperating too much. We have had a few games, but boy, the bulk of the games so far have been all, all canceled and seems like our weather was better in February this year than it has been in, in March and early April. Yeah, if you're a typical New Valley fan and you've been on spring break all this week, you haven't really fallen behind very much because yeah. nobody else has played either. Yeah, nobody else has played either. So we are going to talk about our uh, winter all-RTC teams here this afternoon, so we got a lot to talk about there. But Val, will start off here, some sad news from Argus. Uh, Sophie Petz um, been battling a, a brain tumor and unfortunately lost that battle this week and passed away at the age of 13. Yeah, and uh, I never I never met Sophie, but I know her brothers, Yoan and Ethan, who both play soccer at Argus, and Yoan also is on the baseball team. And so I had found out about her situation uh, last Friday when I was at the Argus baseball game against Lavelle, and I talked with Joe Kindig and uh, some of the parents, and they had gone uh, they had done a little bit of fundraising just you know just to kind of help pay for some of the meals and just. Uh, that the family was going through and just kind of helped to fray some of the costs. But it was, yeah, it was an unbel- unbelievably tragic story. And I, I hadn't heard of it until that point. But, uh, um, and of course, Andy Petz, uh, Sophie's dad, is an assistant soccer coach at Argus. So this, again, when it, I mean, whenever this happens in a community, it's a big deal. And when, it, when, it's, just, when it's such a small community like Argus, Mm-hmm. It's an even bigger deal, and this is a community that's just had to deal with so much in the last, what, year and a half or so, the Emily yeah. Carr. Well, even even back, you know, a few years before that, obviously, with uh, the DeMott, uh, you mm-hmm. know, with Courtney DeMott and, and then her sister who passed away in mm-hmm. that accident. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, and I know Andy pretty well. He used to uh, mm-hmm. go in, you know, all the old farts would get together and, play basketball at the school on Sundays and he was always there playing basketball and Mm -hmm. you know super nice guy great family and the one thing I guess you could say that you can lean on there is I know their faith is very strong yeah that's what Joe Kindig was telling me as well that this is a a family with uh, uh, that really relies on it's uh, it's a very faithful family in the Baptist uh, uh, you know a very strong faith in the Baptist faith, and and I think is going to rely is relying on that a lot. And um, but uh, yeah, yeah, our our thoughts and prayers are definitely with the uh, the Pets family and the whole Argus community because, mm-hmm. like you said, Argus is such a tight knit community, and there's way too right. much of this that they've had to go through. And, and what Todd Vanderweel had to go through, I mean, it looks like he's no news is good news. We hope as far as Todd's recovery. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's been a lot yeah. that, that they've had to go through there in the community. Well, uh, some better news uh, for for me anyway. Maybe not so much for mm-hmm. you, but uh, the uh, Purdue Boilermakers have broke through finally and are going to be playing on Saturday in the Final Four. Something that a lot of people have not seen in their lifetime. The last time it happened was 1980. So I was five years old when they when they played, and the uh, Final Four the last time, they came so very close so many times there. Obviously, 2019 was such a heartbreak with uh, losing in overtime to the eventual champion, Virginia. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Robbie Hummel with the situation where he, uh, you know, tore his knee, and uh, that team looked like they were po- poised to go to the Final Four. So uh, congratulations to uh, Matt Painter, a great guy. I, I you know, just a, a super guy, and uh, Zach Eady got some more good news today. I don't know if you saw that. He's the uh, uh, reigning AP Player of the Year. Now he is the two-time AP Player of the Year. And it's a very select club. Of yeah, people have done that more than once. I think him and Ralph Sampson and Lou Alcindor, yeah, aka Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I think that's about it. Yeah, yeah, very short list. Yeah, very very short list. So, that, which is ironic that it's a short list. Yeah, because they're all tall people. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, looking forward to that. That's yeah. going to be uh, taking place tomorrow, just a little after 6 p.m. for the Boilers. So Yeah, and, you know, I know. Uh, speaking of NCAA tournament news, I know Macy Brown had went to see Oakland play uh, NC State. 
Yeah. She and her family went out to Pittsburgh to watch that. So that had to have been great. I know she had said she. I know. Uh, I think talking with uh, um, uh, with uh, Chris Brown, uh, Macy's dad, he had said that Macy had met Greg Campy around campus. He's just kind of a regular guy around the, even though he's been there for 40 years. And that was a great story. Yeah. So you were able to go to see Pit, to Pittsburgh and. Uh, of course, uh, that was kind of counterbalanced with a heartbreaking loss for Nevada and Corey Barnett and his team losing to that heartbreaker to Dayton in the first round. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's always crazy, but uh, I my bracket is doing a little better now because I had Connecticut playing Purdue in the championship. So okay. hopefully that uh, that comes to fruition, mm -hmm. and I had Purdue winning, so hopefully that comes to fruition mm -hmm. as well. So. Uh, you got some other notes here on our intro, Val. Take yeah, me. yeah. I wanted to congratulate Maggie Smith. She signed uh, within the last week or so to uh, run cross country and track at University of Southern Indiana, so at oh. the Division One level. Okay. Wow. And of course, one of her teammates will be yeah. Zoe Seward from yeah. Rochester. So we've yeah. got we've got multiple people from our area going to Southern Indiana to run uh, track and cross country. Uh, congratulations to Maddox Businski from Winnemac. He is going to Manchester University. He's going to play two sports. He's going to play football and baseball there. Okay. Wow. Uh, congratulations to Ava Thomas from Rochester. We don't usually talk about juniors very often committing to colleges, but Ava, you know, she had an offer from Grace College, and she visited the campus, and she knew right away that she wanted to go there, and yeah, wanted, uh, and so she signed with she signed there, and we had a, a photo of Ava uh, signing last week. Yeah. Uh, we got to meet Denny Duncan, who's the coach there. Very successful coach. Uh, they've only had a girls' golf program there since 2015, but I mm -hmm. think they've um, they've they've been among the top teams in the conference they, just about they every did, year. Yeah, I, I remember actually uh, when I went there on a visit with Maddie, who ended up graduating from Grace. Um, the one of the girls that was in our visit was mm -hmm. the first girls' golf recruit. Yeah. So she was uh, getting ready to to go. Yeah. So yeah. Denny Duncan's the only coach they've ever had. In the mm -hmm. girls' golf program at Grace College. Yeah. Uh, so again, and we get to enjoy Ava for one more year next year. So Ava wants to major in elementary education. That's a good school to go to for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, the new classifications came out this week. This isn't huge news because we kind of already I'd written that ar article when the enrollment numbers came out that kind of speculated on this. So, but uh, Pioneer is moving down from Class Two A to Class One A in volleyball, girls' basketball, and boys' basketball. That's official. Um, and of course, they're staying in one A and just in a, every other sport that they play that's classed, or at least that we know. Of. We still don't know about softball and baseball. That'll be that'll come out over the summer. You would assume one, but, one yeah. would assume that yeah. uh, Rochester is moving down from class three A to class two A in girls basketball, mm -hmm. staying in two A in volleyball and boys basketball and football and boys soccer, and then staying in one A for girls soccer. That again, not a huge surprise. Mm -hmm. And then Winnemac football is dropping from 2A to 1A. Mm -hmm. And, again, that's not a big surprise at all uh, based on the enrollment numbers that came out. Still, having said that, Winnemac is going to be the largest school in the Hoosier North Conference next year. Right. Yeah, they go from uh, kind of being middle of the pack to, to now they're mm -hmm. the big dogs when, uh, you know, you got schools like OD and Argus that are going to be joining and South Central will mm -hmm. be joining for uh, for football and then, of course, North Miami as well. So yeah, it's going to be uh, – you know, pretty even. They're not. They're not massively bigger than anybody else. They're just a, a little bit. Right. I believe Winnemac will be the only uh, school that plays two A volleyball yeah. and basketball. Yeah. Everybody else will be is one A for everything. Yeah. So again, you can now draw up your own. And we've talked about <laughs> going down the going down the rabbit hole about oh man what what who should be in what sectional and who's going to go where who's going to go where well right yeah yeah well, where's Rochester going to be going in a sectional and, with like Bremen and LaVille and Jimtown yeah or in a sectional with Manchester Wabash and Whitco right so that who knows I mean will Valley be in a sectional with Wawasee and West Noble or will they be in a sectional with Plymouth and the South you know some of those South Bend schools like South Bend St Joe and Mishawaka Marion and John Glenn again. And a couple other teams of note uh, in our area, not necessarily ones we cover, but you know, North Judson is going to be moving to 1A for basketball. Mm -hmm. um, South Central is going to be moving down to 1A as well. Mm -hmm. And then you know, for the for the Rochester girls uh, competing the last couple years with Bremen mm -hmm. in a 3A section, well, Bremen's going to be moving down to 2A. Yeah, we don't know obviously if they're going to be in the same sectional again, but. Boy, they've just uh, been a very impressive team the last couple of years. Obviously, winning the sectional this year, yeah. So now potentially could be in uh, another uh, sectional matchup with the Zebras. So. Yeah. 
interesting stuff and we should know what later this spring hopefully yeah, later this month i think later right, this april, month. april 29th or april 30th somewhere around there they have an ex the executive committee meeting is april 29th which i think is when they rubber stamp that and that'll be re that'll be released uh, about a day sometime around that day or the, maybe the next day i yeah. think the commit the the actual realignment committees meet around april 15th yeah it's going to be interesting, you know. Do they mm -hmm. try and keep a lot of these sectionals together? Obviously, there's going to be a. Uh, I don't know what the what did the number actually end up being as far as the uh, amount of one A schools that were added. Do you know uh, how many how many were added to the with the new percentage? Uh, somewhere around twenty to twenty two. Yeah, yeah. So, what roughly? Roughly a team per sectional, possibly. Yeah, yeah, a team or two. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the the one A sectionals are are going to be potentially either seven or eight teamers. Yeah, the one A sectionals are going to be very interesting how they turn out. Yeah, this is, I mean, obviously it's always kind of a big deal every two years when these come out, but I think it's especially big this time mm -hmm. because of how one A is going to look. Yeah, and yeah. There's all these bigger <laughs> sectionals. We could we could get into that rabbit hole again if yeah. we wanted to, mm -hmm. but uh, you know there's just there's all kinds of possibilities, and you never really know uh, what direction they're going to go with those. And you know, football for the zebras could you know could be a completely different looking sectional. Winnemac's not going to be in there anymore, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and Benton Central's not going to be in there anymore. So just not yeah, they not, actually moved up in Mer football. Benton Central moved up, yeah. and yeah, that was weird. They moved up in football and down, down in basketball. <laughs> To two A, but yeah, uh, what Rochester's football section look, looks is going to look like is going to be really uh, weird. Yeah, I think it's yeah. going to be. You know, will LCC still be in there? Yeah. Will they be in a different section? Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's all kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. so. Of course, Adam Central is moving up to two A. Right, because of their football. success factor. And they also had an increase in enrollment on top of that. Did they? They're, yeah. So they they might have potentially moved up anyway. They might have potentially moved up anyway. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting, uh, you know, like I said, you could sit here and talk and contemplate all day mm -hmm. long, but we're not going to bore everybody with yeah. that. So um, let's go ahead. Let's take a uh, quick break. And when we get back here, we're going to get into our uh, all RTC teams for uh, for the winter sports, you know, girls basketball, boys basketball, uh, boys and girls swimming, boys and girls wrestling this year so mm -hmm. we're going to have a uh, all rtc player of the year for girls wrestling i think that's our our first one right yep yeah so uh, when we get back we'll get into that we're going to start off with girls basketball coming up next thanks for joining us we are talking sports with val here on a friday afternoon stop on by to in your hardware for all your home project needs with a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyards will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyards Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574 223 4920 to see how Inyards friendly staff can help you. Pacesetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Pacesetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.pacesettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. 
Welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, we're going to get into our all RTC teams for the winter sports here. Start off with uh, girls basketball, and Val, we had a pretty good uh, contingent of uh, possible uh, players of the year for girls basketball. And we had two, and we, we were we had two real sensational candidates. And yeah, and we couldn't decide, so we yeah. just went ahead and, and went with both of them. Yeah. Samantha Renninger and Isabel Scales are our picks. This is the first time the our RTC Girls Basketball Player of the Year is not from Pioneer. Yeah. It was Haley Kripe back in 2021 and Ashlyn Brook each of the last two years. But uh, with Samantha Redinger, I mean, it was pretty clear that this was a special player who was having a special year. But at the same time, as you know, as cast and kept their tournament run going, and it was clear what kind of role Isabel Scales was playing for her team and how do you possibly compare these two so we gave it to both of them yeah uh, uh just two players who just stood above the rest i mean samantha redinger led the state in scoring right at uh 29 points a game scored 685 points which is an argus single season record had 55 points in a game which is an argus single game record yeah she she set a lot of records at argus and it's not because there was low numbers yeah. from the past i mean they were very good records. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you have players like Courtney Dunlap and, and Kelsey Hollibaugh, and, I mean, there's there's some really big shoes to fill there, and, and Sam filled them and then some. Yeah. And really carved out her own niche, you know, in terms of a player who scores 29 points a game but did it um, playing really the two-guard spot. She was not a point guard. Mm -hmm. And in high school basketball, that's really hard to do, but that – I mean, her dedication to improving her shot, but also her moving without the ball, mm -hmm. it was just a, it's a real special skill that she had. Yeah, kind of Reggie Miller-esque. Yeah. She moved very well without the ball, and, you know, people were trying all kinds of things to, to corral her and, you know, give the other girls a lot of credit because there was a lot of screens that were set mm -hmm. for her to get her open because, obviously, she was drawing a lot of extra attention, and... Uh, you know, they did a great job. Uh, Morgan Barkus, the point guard, a uh, great job, too, of getting her the ball in, mm -hmm. in places where she could score. So great job there. And, you know, Bell, uh, you could argue, and I don't think anybody would argue against you, that if it wasn't for her performance in that uh, sectional championship game against Tri-County, they might not have continued their, their mm -hmm. run because she basically put them on her back and said, all right, we're going to we're gonna win this game. It was impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Again, I, I'm not. I wouldn't call myself a cast and girls basketball historian, but if she's if Bell is not the greatest girls basketball player in cast in history, I don't know who is. I know there was some a couple players in the '90s who were pretty good. Yeah, um, and there. I I know one mm -hmm. kind of that uh, came in the late '90s that was was pretty darn good too. But uh, yeah, I don't know how you can compare them because obviously what the team was able to do and. Not only what she did this year, but what her and that whole class did to completely change the culture of Caston. I mean, yeah, you could you could say she's the greatest athlete mm -hmm. for sure of of all time at yeah. Caston. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a safe bet to say. Yeah. So, and yet the most down to as down to earth a kid as you'll ever meet oh, yeah. at the same time. Yeah, and that that comes from her parents. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever talked to. Uh, Barry or Julie, you would know why she's the way she is mm -hmm. because they are that way as well. Yeah. So uh, let's get through our uh, our rest of our first team here. Another casting player coming up uh, next here with uh, with Addison Zippelman. Addison Zippelman was just uh, a, had a fantastic year, and she kept kind of expanding on her skills and getting a little bit better every year, and kind of capped off this year where she can, you know, I mean, we talked about uh, Bell's kind of. You know, she was so versatile, but Addison was very versatile in a way as well. She could pass, she could shoot, she could handle it. Uh, she could even score in the post a little bit, too, I think, and, and could score off the dribble. Yeah. What a, what a player she turned out to be. And uh, had a great, I thought, regional game against uh, Bethany Christian. Yeah, and uh, I can't remember who, who it was that kind of said something about her, you know, being a softball player that – played baseball or played uh, basketball but mm. uh, I remember the I can't remember who it was but at the comment that you know after she had a really good game against them she's like 
I play basketball too, mm -hmm. and uh, and she does, and she does it at a high level. So uh, can't uh, can't go, I guess. With you know, you talk about having three pioneer players uh, being player of the year. Uh, you got McKenna Stricker in there as a, a first teamer, and I didn't have anything to do with this list. This is Val's list. Just a disclaimer there. Yeah, McKenna uh, McKenna deserved it. I uh, no question. Uh, I went up what he saw. Uh, she just transformed herself as a player. From really kind of a, 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 a kind of a complimentary piece to to Ashlyn Brook, um, and kind of sort of the others. I mean, she, she it, this was her team this year, and I, I mean, she had to handle it uh, a lot. She had, you know, she was top line on other team scouting reports. Uh, she had to handle a lot of pressure. Um, she was able to. I think she she had worked on her shot. Kind of became a three-level scorer in terms of she could shoot the three, she could hit the mid-range shot off the dribble, she could drive to the basket, and kind of like Samantha Redinger, but to a smaller extent, she because she could she was so adept at driving the ball to the basket, she got to the foul line a lot mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now she's got to improve that part of her game, but again, when you uh, when you have a, somebody who can get to the line that much, that's 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 kind of like a cheat code. Yeah, in in girls basketball. Yeah, made made a hundred free throws on the season. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a pretty good number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so that that was definitely well deserved. And uh, last but not least, Ava E. Golf from Valley. Mm -hmm. um, Ava led Valley in scoring and rebounding, and for a team that had, you know, again Valley had just a great year. It just uh, a lot of what ifs at the end of the year. I mean, she fouls out late in the Bremen game, and they wound up losing in overtime. You know, if that charging foul doesn't get called, but. Otherwise, Ava was just she was so consistent all year long, and she could score even against, even against tough defenses. Mm -hmm. uh, she found a way, even if her shot wasn't falling, she found a way to score. Yeah, she led a valley team that we just really weren't sure on what they were going to look like coming off of some you know really big graduations last year. And yeah, they didn't drop off much at all. Yeah, and she was a big reason for that. Yeah, so yeah, it, it was totally. It was just a different type of team completely mm -hmm. uh, from really any of Chris Kindig's teams that he's had at Valley. But they made it work, and Ava Egoff made it work. So yeah. definitely well-deserved. Yep. So that is uh, that is our first team. So go ahead and uh, go through uh, who you chose for the second team. We went with Maddie Douglas from Caston. Um, what a freshman year she had. Uh, she became kind of that third scorer that I think they, they had been looking for. And... You know who scores the winning basket in the sectional final against Tri County? It was Maddie, and um, but in a lot of ways, you could say she was even more impactful on defense. I mean, mm -hmm. Cast was number one or number two in the state all year in defensive scoring average, and she bothered the opposing team's point guard uh, most times. And um, you know, they took it to another level with her. I mean, she and Scales had what. what just those two combined at about so it's seven steals a game. Yeah, I mean that's just crazy. Yeah, and they're just not letting you get into their offense. I was I was very impressed at the way she was able to assimilate into that very senior oriented team yeah. as a freshman, and and really they didn't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. And and she was kind of what they were missing as far as that true point guard and, and that defensive stopper on top. Yeah, uh, Candace Croft from Winnemac absolutely belongs on this team. Um, She's got that pull-up jump shot, which is really nice. It's it's a tough. Not a lot of girls can shoot that shot. Not a lot of boys can shoot that shot. She's really smooth with it, but could also shoot the three, but could also run the team. Just a very good decision maker with the ball in her hands. Um, again, we we don't know if she was a hundred percent healthy at the end of the year. I know she'd been dealing with a little bit of an injury, but when she was in there uh, again. Uh, she just makes good decisions with the ball and is just a really beyond her years as a sophomore point guard. Yeah, she she had a lot on her plate as a freshman, and, and I was impressed at how much uh, growth you could see from her between her freshman and sophomore year. And uh, it just really helped, you know, that team and Coach Stasiak really have a good year. Mm -hmm. uh, we picked Riley Clevenger from Rochester. She's the one, if we had. We we had to bet our house on somebody in our area making a three pointer. I think Riley would be the person we would go to, mm -hmm. uh, and really um, expanded her game. I mean, 
Uh, she, you know, her, her ball handling got a little bit better as well. She mm-hmm. was even able to drive the ball to the basket yeah. on occasion. Yeah. Uh, an underrated passer as well. But again, uh, shooting for Riley, she's just somebody who, who uh, just you could tell she's put a lot of work into her shot and um, really, you know, well deserved, I think, for this. Yeah, and I, I thought Riley did a great job because last year she was strictly a shooter. Mm-hmm. And like you said, she, she added that dimension to her game. Not only, you know, maybe take one dribble and take a pull up 15 footer, but also uh, getting to the rim and sometimes against, you know, a good defender. So, uh, you know, from her sophomore to junior year, she really showed a lot of improvement. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chesney Miller from Valley. Uh, again, Chesney scored six points a game. It's maybe most people we pick for the first or second team usually average more than six points a game. But if that's all you think of Chesney Miller as her <laughs> offense, you haven't seen her play defense. She mm-hmm. could, she single handedly wrecked teams with her mm-hmm. defense. Yeah, uh, uh, she was probably our, our defensive. Uh, I don't know, stopper of the year. Yeah, she or Scales probably would be that. Uh, she was just a huge factor in Valley's defense. She just had a, a relentless motor too. I mean, she. <laughs> She's not going to do it for a play or two. She's going to do it for the entire game, and and she played a lot of times the entire game. And mm-hmm. uh, you know she can just obviously <laughs> running cross country and and running all the distance races and stuff. Her endurance is really high, and and what she showed it on the basketball floor as well. Yeah, Marissa Iverson from Winnemac made it. Uh, she was just a girl. Again, if you play, if you're a post player and you play for Tony Stasiak, you're going to get. Uh, he's going to try and. F- Get you the ball if you were, and she worked on her moves. I know I, I talked with her during when they won that uh, the uh, Kitchen Classic after they mm-hmm. won that. And she talked about how first of all she had to spend a lot of time in the weight room to get stronger, but then how much she had worked on her moves. And again, uh, you know she started the year coming off the bench, but by the end of the year she was in the starting lineup. And she's only a sophomore. I, I don't think she's going to be leaving the starting lineup for two more years. Yeah, and just a really good post player for Winnemac. I honestly didn't know a whole lot about her until the first time that they played Pioneer, and I think that might have been her first start because I think mm-hmm. Candace was hurt, uh, and so she started that game and she dominated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I knew who she was after that game. Yeah, she she really put her stamp on that game, and uh, she's going to be an impressive player. Yeah, has some, has some good solid moves on mm-hmm. the post. Yeah, and uh, we picked Ella McCarter from Rochester for the second team. Again, Ella is just uh, another versatile player, kind of a Almost a positionless player. Mm-hmm. She could score. She could shoot. She could rebound. She could pass. You know, if you tried to, again, Rochester handled opposing teams' pressure much better this year, and that had a lot to do with Ella. Also had a lot to do with another player we're about to talk about. But again, Rochester had almost multiple ball handlers, which helped them handle the handle opposing teams' pressure. And it just seemed like when uh, Ella, whenever Rochester won, it was usually because Ella had a big game. And uh, she was, I mean, and especially had a big game on the boards. And you could see Ella, Ella playing with more confidence as the season went on. Yeah, her her skill set is more of a guard skill, but her mm-hmm. size is, is obviously a, a small forward size. And mm-hmm. she creates uh, matchup nightmares left and right. And Yeah, she I mean, can, she's a legit 5'10". Yeah, she can, she can play on the inside. She can also play offense on the outside. And, um, and her passing, uh, she made some passes that you're like, Wow! Yeah, you know those are just wow passes. So mm-hmm. Definitely a, a deserving spot for her on second team. Yeah. Uh, honorable mention: We had Piper Link from Winnemac, uh, Gabby Gonzalez from Valley, Aubrey Wilson from Rochester, who really came out at the end of the year, mm-hmm. just a freshman, just a freshman. Yeah. Uh, Maggie Smith from Winnemac. The effort, we won't mention her. She's going to play uh, run track and cross country at. Southern Indiana, but she's also an honorable mention in basketball. Mia McKegg from Pioneer are really, uh, really blossomed this year as a sophomore. I mean, mm. uh, as you know, she had, didn't really have a choice. Yeah, yeah, was, she had to. Yeah, yeah, kind of a kind of a more of a JV role as a freshman, but really started on the varsity every game. And I think was second on the team in both scoring and rebounding. Mm. She, I think she led in rebounding. Or, actually. Yeah, led in rebounding. Yeah, yeah. Grace Sieber from uh, Culver. Grace was the point guard for a Culver team and. Was really their only experienced ball handler, and uh, again had helped dealt with the coaching change. Uh, I, I I just had great respect for Grace and the job that she did this year. Yeah, we also picked her Culver teammate Amaya Williams, who was uh, maybe minute for minute one of the best rebounders we had in our area. 
Yeah. A uh, little bit of a struggle to stay on the floor sometimes with foul issues. Yeah, but, but when yeah. she was on the floor, she yeah. grabbed just about every rebound and could score a little bit as well. Kelsey Cox from Valley, just a real solid uh, post player you can count on for about six to eight points a game. Really, that baseline 15-foot shot was her shot and also averaged about five, six rebounds a game was a real factor. Uh, you know, she played in the back line of their zone uh, and was a really good rebounder as well. Uh, we picked, uh, who else do we pick here? Uh, we picked Jaden Field from Rochester uh, on our list. Uh, and then again, a really strong rebounder as a freshman, mm-hmm. uh, and could score could score from time to time as well. We think she's going to only get better as a scorer, but she's just a, a natural rebounder from day one. Uh, Morgan Barkas from Argus. We talked about Morgan and her role in kind of feeding uh, Samantha Redinger, yeah. and was really not kind of an underrated three point shooter as well. Yeah, yeah, we saw her hit some big shots in some key situations for them, and, and a good defender, I thought, mm-hmm. uh, 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 for them as well. Sadie Popejoy from Winnemac uh, hit a ton of clutch three-pointers uh, for Winnemac. Just was fearless and was really in the moment at all times. Uh, just loved her spirit out there and uh, really looking forward to seeing how much better she gets. Mm-hmm. Again, uh, play, as a freshman, kind of trying to fit in in a veteran lineup and how she did. Now with uh, Smith and uh, Link graduating, uh, how will that how will her role evolve next year? That's going to be fun to watch. Uh, Ellie Bolenbacher from Argus, uh, again, another really strong rebounder. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of continued on from where she, again, a lot was dependent on her, and she was another one who kind of had, when she, you know, she dealt with some foul issues at times, but when she was in there, she grabbed, she was a big time rebounder. Macy Peterson from Valley, again, I, I feel terrible for Macy. I, if she hadn't gotten hurt, I would imagine she would have been first team or second team. But I definitely wanted to save a spot for her on honorable mention. Uh, again, her just you know she had an injury last summer and then another knee injury. Yeah. Uh, what around uh, early December, mid December? Yeah. That ended her season. Uh, Macy Hinderleiter and Annie Harsh from our uh, Caston. We wanted both of them on our team. Macy became just a much better defensive player during her career and even could score a little bit. And he, I think just her overall ball handling and just her confidence with the ball in her hands. Uh, really improved, and Annie Harsh was uh, again just a really reliable player uh, to have as, as as a sixth player off the bench. Could shoot it some, really improved her ball handling and passing as well, and I think was even an under underrated defender. Yeah, I would argue with you on shoot it some. I, I think she could shoot it a lot. She yeah. she came up with some really big threes for that team, right uh, in the sectional and the regional. And the semi state. Yeah. And she went three threes against the market yeah, Catholic. Yeah, yeah. yeah she and scored was, nine nine points. She was I think it was like first nine, wasn't it? <laughs> something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely a, a great player for uh the Comets. Mm-hmm. So that is our uh, girls basketball uh team from uh, last winter and uh we're gonna take another quick break here and when we come back we're gonna talk about the boys team here mm-hmm. on Talking Sports with Val. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services, visit Kriskin'sPoolsAndSpas.com, call 574-857-3100 or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskin's can help you. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with, with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency.
Now more than ever, your business needs fast and reliable internet. Whether you're hosting a meeting, printing invoices, or keeping inventory, your business deserves the best internet speeds to keep everything running smoothly. And to get the best speeds, you need a fiber connection. Here at RTC, we have the solution for you. Contact me, Steve Stricker, to see how we can best serve you, or you can also visit us online at rtc1.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. We've uh, talked about our girls' team. Now let's uh, get into our boys' basketball team for last winter, all RTC team. And uh, we're going to go up to Argus again. We've had uh, a winner or two from Argus already in the uh, past, and, and we're going to go with Sean Richard as our player of the yeah, year. Yeah, Sean Richard is our player of the year. And I um, just the more I saw of him, the more I – I mean, in a lot of ways, if you had asked me two years ago that Sean Richard would eventually be our RTC Player of the Year, <laughs> I'm not sure I would have believed that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, because not that Sean was bad necessarily, but he was just he was kind of a supporting player, a role player mm-hmm. on those teams with his brother, and um, with you know Teddy Redinger and Dylan Kindig and those guys. Uh, but and even la- even last year, you saw wow, Sean Richard can play point guard. I mean, mm-hmm. he's He's more than we thought he was going to. He's more than I thought he he, he was going to be, or more than I than I had ever imagined. And then this year he took it to just like two or three levels beyond that. Yeah. I mean, who would have ever thought Sean would average twenty four points a game? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. And um, I mean, when I you know I was there for their sectional game against Westville. I think half the town of Westville was guarding him, and he <laughs> still scored thirty one. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, it was a common. And the thing is, he. He's a point guard who averaged 24 points a game who rarely shot three-pointers. Yeah. I mean, all of this stuff was done off the dribble, in the post, in the mid-range. Yeah. And it was just, it, it, and it's uh, really a, a great credit to him and a great credit to Coach Jason Breeden to kind of set him up in, for opportunities to score like that. Yeah, just a great job, especially this year, obviously, you know, with J.J. graduating and and basically four of the five starters from last year's team graduate. Mm-hmm. He's the only one really returning and really able to, uh, well, I guess Luke was, was returning as well. But so, you know, besides him and Luke Stoltz, there wasn't really a whole lot of experience coming back and, mm-hmm. and really able to lead a, a very young team and, and have a, a pretty successful season. So very deserving of the, the top spot there. And also joining him on the first team, Jack Rogers from Culver uh, transferred in from uh, Culver Academy, and really, uh, you know, didn't get to see him in game one because mm-hmm. he was not uh, available against the Rochester Zebras. But uh, his first start of the season uh, through the end of the year was uh, just very impressive. Yeah, you can count on him for twenty plus points a game. Plus, he was a good passer, uh, a guy who you know he was kind of creative. In terms of his ability to finish in the paint, uh, kind of had to, you know, could hit the pull-up shot, but could also drive to the basket. Just really strong. Uh, kind of, he kind of had that fullback mentality, which is, yeah. I mean, he is a fullback in, on the football team, so he just kind of carried that, I think, a little bit to the to the basketball court, and it really worked for him. And I mean, he scored against even the best opponents. Yeah, yeah. Got a pair of Drews on the first team, one from Rochester, Drew Bowers, and one from Pioneer, Drew McKegg. Yeah. Uh, Drew McKegg really uh, was a guy who, uh, again, just continued to kind of elevate his game. I think, we, we, you know, he if you think he was just a shooter, boy, you're only kind of scratching the surface of Drew's skill set. I mean, he can't shoot it, but he could, he could. he was also really quick, could drive to the basket, was really decisive on his drives to the basket, good passer. Averaged eight rebounds a game for a guard who's maybe what six feet six one. Mm-hmm. Um, just a real heady player. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's one thing we have in common with kind of all of our guys on this team. They're all really just heady players who uh, make good decisions on on the court with the ball in their hands. Drew plans on uh, moving on to the uh, medical field, possibly be a doctor. So mm-hmm. you know, very very smart kid. Yeah. Yeah. Drew Bauer is the point guard from Rochester. We, again, we were so impressed. I mean, his ability to uh, to run a team both in the half court and in transition. Uh, he made he made some wild passes on the year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Good wild passes. Yeah, yeah. and 
Um, just v- had very good instincts on the floor. Mm. Very good instincts. He, 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 I, I, he just specialized in coming in from the weak side and getting that steal and then getting the fast break going. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just seemed to know where you were going to pass the ball before even you knew. Mm-hmm. And so that was just really impressive and, and was an underrated shooter on top of that. Yeah, and you know the thing I liked about his game is not just his passing, but he's always got the ball to the right person at the right time. Yeah, you know, not it's not just getting the ball to the right person; it's getting it to him at the right time, and you know, so that they're able to uh, you know continue on and do something positive with it. And he, he very uh, very an intuitive uh, player, mm-hmm. very smart player. Yeah. And, just knows the game. Yeah. Yeah. And we also picked Stephen Akasi from Tippecanoe Valley for our first team. Uh, Stephen uh, led Valley in scoring and rebounding. I think he averaged, what, about 13-8. and eight. For a Valley team that didn't really play, I would not say Valley played an up-tempo style. So 13 points a game for Valley with how they played, I think that was a pretty impressive number. And, uh, you know, he, he got a lot better. He got a lot better with the ball in his hands. Uh, he got a lot better. He could drive the ball to the basket and finish, but at, in the post was where he was probably at his best. Mm-hmm. Very impressive game in the in the sectional final against John Glenn. Uh, you know they were all over him trying to trying mm-hmm. to slow him down, and uh, he just kind of battled through it. Unfortunately, they didn't get uh, get the W there. But uh, just a, a great player and only a sophomore. Yeah, and he's really. He's also a force on the defensive end as well. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, he's a guy who, you know, just just little things like pump fakes and and uh, finishing around the rim. He, it, he 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 didn't have the background in basketball that maybe some of the other kids on our team did, but he's really catching up fast. Yeah. Yep. So just a, a great player and a, and a neat kid to meet too. So that is our uh, first team, and uh, tell us who we picked on the second team. Well, we went with another typical New Valley player, Riley Shepard, on our second team. Again, it's Riley, unfortunately, you know, missed what the first uh, month of the season due to injury, uh, but was really a, a, again a dead eye shooter. And at six five, and I, and could, and and really improved his kind of his his overall his handle. Mm-hmm. So he was able to get to the basket a little bit as well. Uh, but again, a guy who was when he was on on a, out of fire, he was just impossible to stop he could toss in three or four three-pointers in a hurry yeah uh tanner reinerts from rochester uh a guy who really kind of transformed himself at the first like two three four games of the year really you were you were wondering about Tan- tanner is you know is this going to be his year but then mm. something kind of clicked i remember him having kind of a con- kind of a heart-to-heart conversation after the logansport game right outside the locker room and something clicked at that point because tanner became I mean, from a confidence standpoint, and he just kind of found his niche um, the rest of the way. Uh, he could shoot the three, but he also had kind of that little pump fake and then could could drive in and hit that pull-up 15-foot jump shot and even had that little floater shot that he had. In his, he, added, he added that to his arsenal as well uh, and also led Rochester with eight rebounds a game. Yeah, that, that was the thing that I was most impressed with with Tanner was – you know, his freshman and sophomore years, he was more of a, you know, he kind of wanted to stay outside and shoot mm-hmm. threes and didn't really want to do uh, as mm-hmm. much of the dirty work. But this year, uh, I think he was willing to get down and get dirty and go inside and get mm-hmm. the rebounds, you know, play good defense against the post players and uh, really added that phase to his game and, and really became a complete player. Yeah, if you talk to other coaches, they all said that he was a matchup nightmare for them. Yeah. Because a six three kid who's that strong and can shoot like that, mm-hmm. he was he was a tough. He's a pretty rare bird. Yeah. Uh, in that case, uh, we'll be seeing a lot of him this spring. Uh, Luke Stoltz from Argus. Uh, mm-hmm. Luke at six five is another kid who's kind of a. He kind of had to expand his game. He had no choice but to expand his game, yeah. given that Argus had so little coming back from last year. Uh, but Luke could, you know, again he he he, had, he, he really worked on his post moves and. You know, if he caught the ball in good position near the bucket, you could pretty much just put it on the board. Uh, shot a lot of free throws this year along with Sean Richard and improved that area of his game. Uh, was a big-time rebounder. Uh, and even when Argus tried tried a little press this year, usually like a 1-3-1, mm-hmm. and it was usually Luke who was on top of that, and that speaks well for his mobility and his footwork. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Caleb Stinson from Caston. I know we've said a lot of great things about Caleb uh, just 
every little again just how he improved his game from year to year. I don't think there was ever doubt about his athleticism, but you know he, then he improved his handle and then he improved his shot mm-hmm. and he became uh, he he was Caston's go to guy. Uh, we thought um, mm-hmm. by the end of the year, uh, really really the whole year he was. And then Owen Prater from Rochester, uh, really impressed by Owen's improvement. Um, he added some post moves to his game, even though he's only six feet tall, and he can almost r- he can almost run the team out of the post mm-hmm. uh, because he was such a good passer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, was a great rebounder for his size, just really strong. Um, uh, just understood kind of matchups and and what were adva- advantageous matchups for him. And then if other teams tried to press Rochester, well, he could come out and help Drew Bowers handle the ball. Mm-hmm. So again, with with uh, Bowers, Reinerts, and Prater back next year, yeah, there's a lot of reason for optimism at Rochester. Yep. So uh, that's the second team honorable mention. Uh, yeah, we went with Ian Cooksey from from Valley, a great shooter, uh, you know, a consistent uh, producer from the outside for Valley. Talon Zider from he was that guy for Cast, and he was another great shooter mm-hmm. uh, who really. Uh, you know, again, expanded his game this year. John Malco from Winnemac, uh, just a consistent player. Uh, you know, Coach, I know Coach Springer really kind of, uh, really pra- praised all of his seniors for kind of um, sacrificing a little bit mm-hmm. so the other players, so some of the younger players could get theirs. But John was just a very, very fine, fine player. Uh, could shoot from the outside, but could also drive to the basket and score. Strong kid. Um, David Height from Culver, really nice junior year. Uh, we've we've talked about kind of his gradual improvement as a player. Now he's really worked on his ball handling and his passing, and could could almost run the team uh, at times if they wanted to put Rogers out on the wing. Mm-hmm. And a good defensive player as well. Yeah, yeah. average about three steals a game. Yeah, and uh, Brendan Hines from Winnemac. Uh, that sectional game put me over the top on Brendan Hines. Mm-hmm. I, we knew he was good, but we didn't know he was that good. If Renan's got another year, like can do that consistently. Wow, he's going to have a sensational senior year. Yeah. Uh, Jonas Kaiser from Rochester. I would not have imagined Jonas would have made it uh, a year ago. Uh, in fact, we didn't know how much playing time he was going to get. But by the time he got healthy and got acclimated to the varsity, he he has a chance to be a really special player. I think. Yeah. Um, well, he got a he got an opportunity there late in the year with an injury that uh, he was able to come in and and really stepped up big time and, and did a great job. Can do a little, another kind of positionless player. He can mm-hmm. shoot it. He can score it. He can rebound it. He can play defense. He can yeah. run the court. Yeah. Um, looking looking forward. I think to, even a good passer too. Yeah. Yeah. A couple more good years from him. Yeah. Jay Spencil from Winnemac, really uh, a strong veteran player, just mm-hmm. a reliable kid. I uh, could shoot the three, but I think probably his forte was driving it to the hoop. Mm-hmm. Really athletic kid, another kid who dealt with you know different coaching changes, had to learn different systems. Yeah, had a really nice career. Played played great in that sectional game. Unfortunately, they came up short, but uh, yeah, boy, he had a great game. Yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Will Malco from Winnemac, uh, a, a, a kid who really came on this year. Um, uh, we 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 saw kind of little highlights of it toward the end of his freshman year. And then this year was kind of another step up. A ki- another kid who's just uh, uh, maybe, what, six feet tall, but not afraid to stick his nose mm-hmm. uh, in the paint uh, when things got physical. Uh, I'll be curious to see if he may- maybe takes a more of a ball handling role next year mm-hmm. with his brother graduating, with Bentel graduating. Uh, Adria Guasp from Culver, really good shooter. Uh, really, uh, you know, I-, I thought he was playing his best at the end of the year. It's just... Boy, he's just one kid. Boy, you wish he could come back for another year. Right. He said he's headed back to Spain, but uh, really a, a nice shooter uh, and a pretty good defender as well. Yeah. Uh, Grant Yadon from Caston, uh, again another ca- kid who really came on as the year progressed mm-hmm. and became a real force. You know, we, we were kind of wondering about what uh, Caston would be like in the interior uh, after Keen Chainlaw graduated, what they would look like. Uh, but you know, Grant really came on and was really, I think, not only could score but could pass it as well, and was you could count on him for about seven, eight rebounds a game. It seemed like mm-hmm. uh, Bryce Bogger from Rochester, unfortunately, an injury cut his year short, which created an opportunity for Jonas Kaiser. But Bryce was another cue to really raised his game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, Rochester loved to run that pick and pop play for either Reinerts or Bogger. 
and he was, you know, uh, you know, Bryce usually had to grab the other team's best score as well, and yet he had to help out on the offensive end. And Bryce was, you know, what six one was usually having to guard like a guy who was like six four, six five. He mm-hmm. usually had to give up several inches in height. Uh, Kyler Johnson from Valley, really well deserved, uh, good passer, good scorer, uh, just a, a consistently good team player. Lucas Perry from Pioneer was a kid who, uh, another kid who really came on at the end of the year, um, kind of an undersized post at six feet, maybe six one, mm-hmm. uh, but could shoot the three a little bit and mm-hmm. could can handle it a little bit. And I think really kind of developed his niche on the team as kind of a support for Drew McKegg. Uh, Kenyon Belden from Argus, really excited to see what his future is, is in store. Could handle it a little bit, could pass it a little bit. Again, just kind of a fearless kid, not afraid to drive it to the basket as well. And Lane Hook from Caston, averaged about seven points a game his freshman year. We were there when he scored, what, 20, was it 24 against Culver? Mm-hmm. Um, just a really bright future uh, for him. Uh, again, kind of a multi skilled 6'4 big guy. Mm-hmm. All right, that is our uh, team for uh, the boys' side. So we're going to take another quick break here and come back. We'll talk about the swimming teams here in just a moment on Talking Sports with Val. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over $50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.FultonCountyRMC.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large eye. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. Welcome back here Talking Sports with Val. and uh, We've been through uh, girls basketball, boys basketball. Let's talk a little girls swimming here. and We have uh, another... Uh, Pretty good list here of uh, all RTC girls swimmers led by Miss Chan from Pioneer. Yeah, Chloe Chan from Pioneer is our uh, RTC girls swimmer of the year. Um, really well deserved. Made the sectional final in both the 50 free and the 100 breaststroke and uh, set the conference record, conference meet record in both of those events. So, again, Heartbreaking that she couldn't quite make it to state. She did make the sectional final in the breaststroke four straight years, but didn't quite win it, finished fourth this year, but I think it was, what, second last year? Mm-hmm. It was always finished in the top four, I think, all four years, but uh, had a great, great year, conference champion, and, uh, yeah, definitely well-deserved. Uh, first pioneer girl to ever win our Girls Swimmer of the Year award. Um, uh, on our first team, uh, Hayden Lute from Culver. Uh, set the Hoosier North record in the 200 freestyle and was also really good in the 500 freestyle. And she got also did the 200 IM as well. Uh, again, that I think we talked about some of the sacrifices that the Valley team had to make. Same thing for Culver because they had that aquatic center in Plymouth, which we hear is really nice, but still mm. 
it was a bit of a drive, and Hayden yeah. does a great job. Of course, Hayden got her start with the Rochester Royals Club and has really been at it for a long time. She's put a lot of work into the pool and has well-deserved that. And, uh, you know, hopefully she'll continue on with that. And uh, I think she's got a – who knows if she'll make state someday, but she's – She's definitely taking on all the all the distance, the work that a distance freestyler needs to do, which is a lot. Yeah. Is she a sophomore? She's a sophomore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kendall Craig from Mally, she was our swimmer of the year last year. She made our first team this year from Mally, another distance swimmer, uh, was in the made the uh, sectional final in the, I think it was the, uh, the 200 free, was I think ninth in the 500 free. Really a great career for Valley. And then Kaylin Colford from Pioneer, also makes the first team. Um, I think uh, I believe uh, Butterfly was her top event. Really had a nice year. Was a conference champion uh, this year. Had a, just and just a sophomore as well. Honorable mention: Kaya Murray from Pioneer. Kylie Attinger from Pioneer took up swimming this year. Had a really great year. Was on a, a record-setting relay. Bailey Anderson from Tippecanoe Valley, uh, freshman I believe. And we had to have a diver on our team, so we picked Gracie Clem from Pioneer. Had a really nice year, um, finished, I think, 10th uh, at sectional, but definitely the best girls diver we had in our area. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, uh, that's the girls list here. So on the, on the boys' side of things. Um, well, this was a tough call because there were, it, wasn't, it wasn't who from what school it was going to be, but it was going to be which swimmer from Valley yeah. was it going to be. We picked Carson Parker because he was the guy who made it to Saturday in the breaststroke. Uh, that was the only way we could kind of uh, figure it out between the, all of them. But Carson was the guy who really uh, stepped up as the year went on, had a great 50 free, made it to state in the 50 free as well, which uh, was, a, was a fantastic accomplishment. Broke the school record in both the 50 free and the 100 breaststroke. And any, before Carson came along, again, covering the sport for almost 20 years, going under a minute in the breaststroke, that just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And Carson was 58 seconds and 58.4 by the end of the year. I mean, he's the best, best in the 100 breaststroke that I've ever covered. And he's going to be swimming at the D1 level at Valparaiso University. So, yeah. I mean, they, they know what a special talent he is as well. So definitely Carson Parker, our boys swimmer of the year. Well, and, and you talked about it. You didn't really expand on it. But the Valley Pool was not open this year because yeah. of the construction at the school. and. So they had to go to Warsaw for all mm -hmm. their practices, and I think what they started like seven p.m. Yeah. So not only did they have to go to Warsaw for practice, but they had to go after the Warsaw team practiced. Yeah. So it was not an easy year for them, and and boy, they did really well. Yeah, I mean, not a, not a big team, but they had great results. Yeah, had great results. Um, on our first team, uh, we had in addition to Carson Parker, we had Marcus Smith. He had won it the previous two years, but. Uh, again, we we give it to Carson this year, but Marcus did. It wasn't like he slacked off this year. He was, he was great again. Had to deal with some illness. He thought he had mono, but still won the 200 IM at sectional, won the 100 backstroke at sectional. Swim at 51.2 in the backstroke. He's the fastest backstroker I've ever covered uh, by far. Uh, capable of going under two minutes in the 200 IM. Another really great talent. Just smooth through the pool. Uh, Isaac Whetstone from Valley. You know, Isaac won the sectional in the 500 free last year. Uh, but again, with going to the Warsaw pool, didn't really have a chance to get put as much time in the pool. So instead of focusing on the 500 free, he focused on the 100 free. And he did the 100 free in addition to the 200 free. And he won sectional in both events. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, just some ridiculous times. He was down in the 47s uh, by the end of the year in the 100 free. 143 in the 200 free. That's... That's crazy fast. Uh, great year for Isaac. Really took it up a, a notch. And then Jake Seifer from Rochester, sectional champion of the 500 free. Great story. Um, had made it to the sectional final. Went from fourth to third to second to sectional champion in his four hmm. years in that event. Yeah. That's a pretty good progression. Yeah. Isaac Whetstone said, hey, I'm not doing the 500 free this year. Just thought you might want to know. Mm. And all of a sudden, Jake said, yeah, I'm doing the 500 free. Yeah. I'm going to keep with it. And for those who don't follow swimming, that 500 free, that's a brutal race. I mean, that's that's like running the, the two-mile and track or, yeah. you know, running the 10,000 meters or whatever. And, you know, 
It's a it's a long race. Even Jake said you have to be crazy to swim this event. Right. And that's Jake who's done it for years and years. Yeah. Uh, our honorable mention, Austin Brook from Pioneer. Uh, emphasize, his emphasis w- uh, were the uh, 200 uh, IM and the 100 breaststroke. Uh, I think got a run on 106 in the breaststroke. And unfortunately, he was in the same section with Carson Parker. But a great breaststroke swimmer is Austin Brook. Ian Kitchell from Pioneer. 100 free and the 100 uh, backstroke were his uh, top events. Wes Steininger from Rochester had a really great year. Um, you know, was, Butterfly was kind of his best event. And then Tucker Whetstone from Valley, the fourth member of that relay, uh, those two record-setting relays that Valley had. Tucker got to swim at State as a freshman and is going to have a really good career of his own. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great list. I think if you put uh, put all those kids on a on a swim team and and took them uh, yeah. they would they would compete anywhere yeah. they went yeah yeah we yeah that team would do well yeah all right so that's our swim list uh when we get back we'll get out of the pool and uh, we'll get on to the mats we'll talk some wrestling here in just a moment talking sports with val say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with nutrient ag solutions Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrient can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. And our motor clothes department carries the latest to genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Perkins & Adley LLP, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trust to appeals and guardianships, Perkins & Adley has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at PerkinsAdley.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val for a Friday afternoon, and let's talk some wrestling here, Val. I don't think anybody's going to be really shocked that uh, this list is going to be dominated by the Rochester Zebras. Yeah, I mean, they were the dominant team in our area. They won their conference again. They won sectional. They were they were second at the regional behind uh, Penn. Uh, just had another fantastic year and sent five kids to state. Well, and, and you know, they, they talk about the wrestling teams being a family and, and being a, like a band of brothers and, and that. And, and actually uh, two brothers, true brothers, are our wrestlers of the year. It's the Beck brothers. Yeah, Brant Beck and Brady Beck. I mean, how could we possibly <laughs> choose between them? Brant was third in the state at 165, and Brady was fifth in the state at heavyweight. Um, you know, it was interesting. Brady shared it with Alex Deming last year. And Brady, you know, went up to heavyweight, and uh, of course Alex went up as well. But um, Brady had become kind of a instead of being kind of the big, big two twenty kid on the block, he had became kind of an undersized heavyweight a little bit. Not, mm-hmm. Again, he got up to around about two fifty five, two sixty was kind of his ideal weight, and really relied on his footwork and his experience and his and just kind of his overall mat kind of experience to, and just had a great great year just. Heartbroken for him if he if he gets if he gets an escape against the kid Johnson from Center Grove, it's possible that Brady would have been on top of that podium at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, what a great year! And 
you know, we got to do uh, the sectional there at Plymouth and, you know, for, for uh, you know, everything he was able to accomplish, um, you know, and then and then Bran as well. I mean, yeah. just what a tremendous pair of wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fun fun to watch. Right. Um, right. Bran's only, only losses of the year were to the kid from Crown Point who was ranked number one in the state and the kid from Warren Central who won a winning state. Yeah. Brady's only two losses were in overtime. One was to the kid who was ranked number one in the state from Crown Point the whole year, and the other was to the kid who won a winning state. Yeah. So I mean, it was, they were that close. Yeah. I mean, they were that they were elite. They are well known throughout the state. Yeah. Good uh, good start to our list and uh, yeah, we'll... ten of the fourteen were from Rochester, uh, two from Winnemac, one from Tippecanoe Valley, and one from Pioneer. At 106, Grant Holloway from Rochester made it to state. Uh, amazing that he came back from knee surgery to get to mm-hmm. the state finals. And uh, just an, a bright future. Just um, just needs to get a little bit stronger. But in terms of like technique and stuff, he's already there. 113, uh, Kodiak Hillen from Valley. We saw Kodiak wrestle against Rochester. I was really impressed by what I saw. I think he's got a really bright future. 18 wins as a freshman. He was the only 113 pounder in our area that made it to regional. So he was uh, a pretty easy pick there for on Kodiak. Uh, Charles Cottrell from Winnemac was our pick at 120. Um, you know, he was another guy who was, you know, he wound up winning the Hoosier North. I think he made it to regional. Uh, really solid wrestler. Um, had a great, uh, great young wrestler from Winnemac. Part of that really balanced team they have at Winnemac. And 126. Lane Horn from Rochester, state qualifier for the second straight year, broke Damon Hummel's school record for pins in a season. I mean, just he he tore people apart. I mean, mm-hmm. he was just a uh, just always always knew what he wanted to do. Fantastic wrestler from the top position. What what did he win the conference with? Uh, like a total of a minute thirty in the mat. Yeah. I mean, just something crazy like that. Yeah. All day. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a, a dominating wrestler. Yeah. At 132, we went with DJ Basham from Rochester. Uh, I'm not, you know, the, just a great story. I mean, he wanted to, you know, he 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 didn't play football this year he, to focus on wrestling, and uh, you know, just got better and better and better, and he wanted winning a regional championship. That was just one of the great stories of the year, uh, or that I've ever covered because he was really kind of a late comer to wrestling. Mm-hmm. At 138, Willis Dennis from Winnemac. He was our only uh, area wrestler in 138 who made it to semi-state. Uh, ran into a tough wrestler from Valpo at semi-state and wound up losing, but it really had a, just a solid year. Kind of had lo- kind of had longish arms and legs. It was kind of hard to hard to attack. It was a really good defensive wrestler, and really had a really good year. Uh, you know, on a, on a on a team with a lot of good wrestlers. I think he, I thought he was their MVP. Uh, 144, we went, this was a close one. We had a lot of good 144s in our area. We went with Eli Guffey from Pioneer. Uh, he was a guy who, um, you know, he was a pretty athletic kid, uh, aggressive, uh, won a conference championship, uh, made it to regional, uh, just a sophomore. Uh, again, we had a lot, this one, that was probably the toughest call, but we went with Eli Guffey there. Okay. And then from 150 on up, all zebras. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went with uh, Wyatt Davis at 150. Got within one win of making it back to the state finals. Uh, again, uh, dealt with kind of a shoulder issue throughout the year. I think was sick at times as well. Uh, but again, came very close. Really solid technique. Strong, too. Uh, a kid who could dominate at times. 157, Ethan Amosquita was our pick. Um had you know made it to regionals? I think it was our, uh, he beat um, DJ. It was going to be either him or DJ Depke from Winnemac, but Ethan beat Depke at the sectional, so that kind of was the tiebreaker for us. But well deserved year for Ethan. Uh, again, another kid who skipped football to focus on wrestling, and I think got a lot out of it. Uh, One sixty five, Grant Beck. Uh, One uh, seventy five, Declan Guard from Rochester, a semi state qualifier after not making it to regional as a freshman. Made it all the way to semi-state as a sophomore. Won 35 matches. Again, a kid who's just had a, just a non-stop motor. Mm-hmm. I mean, just really, you know, he was kind of, he literally went the extra mile. 
Yeah, he, he's probably been wrestling for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> just guessing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he, he's probably a lot of a lot of uh, impromptu matches with Brent Beck on the practice mats. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, One ninety, Colin Wean from Rochester. What a year Colin had. Uh, got with an ima- unfortunately got again just one win short of the state finals, just as he did when he was a junior. But Colin got even better this year. Um, had kind of underrated footwork, but was just strong as an ox. I mean, mm. it just could not move him. Um, really good defensive wrestler. Again, a heartbreaking loss to a kid from Hobart in the semi-state ticket round, but uh, Colin had a great year. Was part of that one, two, three uh, at the end of the at the end of the uh, you know in the three biggest weight classes with Colin Wean and our two fifteen pick Alex Deming. Uh, another fantastic year for Alex. Made it to the state finals for the third straight year. Uh, again, heartbreaking loss to a kid from Indianapolis Cathedral, but a great, great year. Um, you know, it was really, you know, as a sophomore, obviously made it to state. Was We knew how special he was already, but Coach Clint Card kind of challenged him to kind of in, kind of increase his offense, find different ways to score, more more in different ways to score, and he did that. And then at heavyweight, Brady Beck, uh, again, he's an all-time legend at Rochester. I mean, he's right up there with Damon Hummel and Marshall Fishback. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. he made it. I think he won twelve. I mean, one hundred and sixty some career wins. I mean, he won twelve career matches at the state finals, where everybody is a stud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there's a uh, Mount Rushmore of Rochester wrestlers, uh, yeah, obviously Damon Hummel's been on that one for yeah. a long time. But uh, I think you could definitely start chiseling Brady's yeah. face into that mountain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our, and, and really became a, a great, great one of the great leaders too. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody talked about Marshall's leadership, and I think Brady kind of took that torch and passed it on and really wanted to be a good leader to the younger kids as well. Mm-hmm. Our honorable mention at 106 from Cast and Jackson Robbins, at 113 from Rochester Reed Perry, at 120 uh, from uh, Cast and Gage Manier, another kid who's going to have a very good career, we think. At 126, Thad Shambaugh from Tippecanoe Valley. 132, uh, Ashton Boyer from Cast and another kind of that freshman brigade who really kind of uh, put some life into that Cast and program and and uh, really, you know, they were they were they were they were a lot of fun to watch this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miles Sherrick from Caston is was our picket. Uh, 138, uh, 144. Kale shots from Rochester again. We had a lot of good 144s in our area. Kale's going to have a really good career. Uh, uh, again, uh, really, a kid is strong at 144, and actually went down from 150 to 144 as the season went on. At 150, Austin Attinger from. Um, Winnemac, uh, Adinger went back and forth from 144 to 150. We put him at 150. Uh, at 157, DJ Depke from Winnemac, uh, conference champion. Uh, 165, Colton Crabb from Valley, semi-state qualifier for Colton, and uh, really good athlete. I'm really looking forward to see what he does on the football field mm-hmm. uh, next fall. Uh, 175, Talon Garner from Winnemac, lost to Declan Gard in the sectional final, but a really nice year for Talon as well. Uh, 190, Pete Duvall from Caston. He had kind of his nemesis in Colin Wean, but Pete had a great year, made it to uh, regional. At uh, 215, Dalton Albert from Valley. Semi-state qualifier was one win short of making it to the state finals. Uh, again, uh, a real hard-nosed wrestler. And at heavyweight, boy, Colton Sisk from Tippecanoe Valley really came out at the end of the year, just a junior, and made it to semi-state. So really good year for Colton, and it was kind of a guy we didn't know a whole lot about but had a great year. Yeah. Well, that is the uh, the wrestling list. Like we said, pretty heavily dominated by Rochester and uh, just a great season for the Zebras and, you know, breaking all kinds of records, mm-hmm. you know, for the Rochester program and really looking forward to seeing uh, what they're going to do next year. Yeah. So um, we've got another wrestling team to do all RTC for, and, and this is a first for us is uh, – We've uh, not done this in the past. Now we are going to do the girls wrestlers. Uh, still not an IHSA sport. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there still a possibility that might happen for next year, or is that we don't know be... yet? We don't know if they're going to take that on in one of their uh, meetings coming up. Um, but definitely, the sports exploded in the past year. Yeah, across the state, not yeah, just, and not just here. So it's it's exploded in Rochester in the last three years for yeah. sure. Yeah. 
So we don't we don't know. It, it seems to be in the, the Fort Wayne area. It seems to be really uh, bustling mm-hmm. uh, there. But there are some areas where it maybe isn't. But here in Rochester, I mean, uh, it's just really grown. And a uh, representative of that is our RTC Girls Wrestler of the Year. Uh, and that's... Uh, uh, Grace Hirams. Great, yeah, Grace Hirams is our is our pick, a four time state qualifier. Grace finished third at the state. Um, really set a high standard for all the wrestlers to follow. So, uh, Grace just a great competitor, tough as nails. Um, really, always in great condition. Uh, you know, just ran into a really tough wrestler from East Side at the semi state and at state. Or who's who's to say that she wouldn't have been at the top of the podium? And then we had four uh, in our uh, – we, we just picked the top five. We want to re- recognize these five in kind of our first team, just pound for pound, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily focusing too much on weight class. But Lane Pepler from Rochester uh, was fifth in the state, uh, went 3-1 and one at the state finals, you know, just lost that one overtime match at state, uh, ran into a really tough girl from New Haven. You know, Lane's – <laughs> it's amazing her story. She said – she said she never tried any sport until she tried wrestling, hmm. but then she just fell in love with it. And by the by, the end of the year she was lifting weights. Well, by the middle of the year she was lifting weights with the boys. So, really strong uh, wrestler. Uh, we wanted to uh, recognize uh, McKenna McKee for making state from Rochester. Uh, Ariana Vela from Culver had a really nice year. I think won eleven or twelve matches, made it all the way to semi state. And we, we we had save a spot for Lily Gerald on our team. Mm-hmm. Lily more than held her own when she had to wrestle boys. Won the Rochester invite. Unfortunately, suffered that terrible elbow injury that ended her season. Uh, but uh, we, you know, we think she would have wound up at state as well. Uh, you know, she, you know, she talked about her her kind of her roots in jujitsu and kind of how she de- she's developed as a wrestler. Um, again, a really well conditioned, just tough, tough kid, tough aggressive kid, and can't wait to see what Lily's future holds. She's just a sophomore. Yeah. So a good list here. We we hope uh, you know maybe next year that uh, we'll be doing some ISHA uh, sectionals mm-hmm. for girls wrestling. So yeah, still a, still an opportunity for that to be happening. We're, we're here for it. Yeah, I mean are. the the, enthu- the enthusiasm level is off the charts. I mean a lot of those Rochester girls traveled all the way to East Chicago to watch the boys wrestle at Summer right. State, and even some of them traveled to Evansville yeah. to watch the boys wrestle at State. They they cannot get enough. Yeah, and you know that weekend here at Rochester where they did the uh, the girls semi state and then the the one A uh, you know state duels for mm-hmm. uh, for Rochester you know hosting both of those events that was just a a great weekend of of wrestling here at Rochester and oh yeah I you mean, know great job of hosting that as yeah well. my, my 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 fondest memories will be of, of going to Evansville for state but the, my second best memory will be that watching the team state duels yeah just an awesome environment yeah. awesome. It was, Spectacle. All right. All right. That is our uh, all RTC winter teams. We are going to take another quick break here. We'll come back and we'll just kind of highlight a couple of the things. I mean, we, we said there hasn't been a whole lot of spring sports going mm-hmm. on yet. Uh, we'll, we'll highlight what a little spring sports we have uh, had and uh, talk about that in our last segment when we get back here talking sports with Val. New Holland, Rochester knows that farmers need equipment they can trust and rely on. That's why for over 125 years, New Holland has been innovating to develop the best and most sustainable products available for our customers. Check out our full fleet that includes our lineup of small compact tractors online at www.NewHollandRochester.com or stop in at one of our locations in Rochester or Logansport to see how we can serve you. Rochester Ford is your go-to for quality vehicles and automotive repairs. With our vast selection of vehicles to choose from, we're sure to put you behind the wheel of your dream car without compromising your bank account. And with every vehicle we sell, we offer a free lifetime oil change policy to be sure that your ride stays in tip-top shape even after you leave our lot. Come see us today at 119 East 4th Street, Rochester, or visit us online at rochesterfordonline.com. Stop on in to Giretti's Place for breakfast, lunch, or to get your day started with a cup of coffee from our signature coffee bar. Located at 701 Main Street, Giretti's Place is the perfect spot for a bite to eat in downtown Rochester. Come on by Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Saturday from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. To see a full menu, visit us at www.girettisplace.com or call us at 574-223-7101.
Looking for a better way to incentivize your staff or provide them with custom apparel to boost morale? Allow the Winning Edge to set you up with a custom edge store tailored to your business needs. Whether you need supplies for your fundraiser or shirts with your business logo on them, the Winning Edge can help you set up an online one-stop shop. Call today at 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. And welcome back here, we're talking sports with Val, and uh, talk a little bit of spring sports here, Val. Hopefully, by next week, we'll have some more games to talk about. Rochester did get a couple games in last weekend. The Zebras baseball team was uh, they traveled down to Madison, Indiana. Yeah. That's just that's a little bit of a drive there, but a, a good road trip there. They went one and one on the day. Uh, defeating Madison and losing to Jeffersonville, who uh, won their 4A sectional last year. Yeah. So pretty good team there. But, you know, Rochester got a lot of people back, but obviously a, a pretty good chunk of their pitching staff graduated last year. Obviously Aaron Huffman being their ace last year graduating. Right, and, and Ethan Medina being kind of a left-handed stopper mm-hmm. who can kind of give you a different look. So. And, and you know, even some of, the, even a lot of big, the key role players like Luke Hunting, right? Uh, you know, Bumford, um, and of course Terry McLaughlin was our what our RTC Player of the Year, right? Right. So he, yeah, he graduated. So yeah, this is going to be a team that's going to going to look a little bit different. Also, um, Zach Parks is not listed on the roster. We don't know. We're gonna have to. We'll we'll ask Corey Good about that. But Zach Parks is not on the team this year. So mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if he's still at school or what's going on there, but. Uh, so they'll, they'll have to adjust without him. Um, but, you know, it seems like scoring runs is not going to be a big problem. Uh, when you've got Carson Pollock, uh, he's probably going to see a lot more mound time this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Tanner Reinertz is a great hitter. He's also a great pitcher. Uh, but they're, all, they're also figuring, and then Jake Seifer, I mean, Jake hit a home run in that win over yeah. uh, Madison. They won 18-15. to 15. Hard, hard to believe Jake's already a senior. I, yeah. I can still remember, you know, covering him, you know, just a freshman playing behind the plate there, like, and then he just he just locked that position down, and and I don't think anybody, you know, for the for the most part, has even been behind the plate in the yeah. last four years. Yeah, for the zebras. And Rochester got another really good senior in Gavin Young. Gavin was hitting lead off in the batting order. Mm-hmm. I saw Gavin is going to p- probably going to pitch some as well. I mean, uh, but again, kind of they're probably not going to have the depth pitching wise, but it's kind of how will that pitching talent develop over the course of the year. And then some newcomers. Brady Coleman's a freshman who's been playing some shortstop and some second base. Brant Beck is a kid who's uh, seeing some time at at second base. And again, Brant's just a sophomore. And then Brady Beck came out for baseball. He's playing some at, at first base. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, some uh, some newcomers, but some kid. Again, uh, with the way the JV has been, I think you know uh, guys like Connor Dunphy and and Brady Gamble have played some JV ball. So yeah. we'll see how that translates now that they're on the varsity yeah supposed to go down to eastern this weekend have we heard anything as of yet it's still going to uh, still going to happen it's or? still going to happen as far as we know rochester scheduled to play adam central yeah uh tonight at 7 30 and then they'll play two more games on saturday the first game will be against either eastern or peru yeah if they win the adam central game tonight uh they'll go to the winner's bracket which means the game will be played at eastern tomorrow right if they lose the adam central game they'll travel to northwestern tomorrow that's where the losers bracket games are right Rochester won the Howard County invite last year, though. Yeah. Still looking forward to uh, to getting them back at Bob Copeland Field. We've got uh, got them on the docket for next Thursday as they host the Panthers. Right. So that right. would be our first broadcast for the Zebras. Right. And Rochester, again, the John Glenn game was postponed. We don't I uh, don't think we know exactly uh, when that game is going to be made up. And then uh, the Howard County tournament. And then they had that game against Plymouth. They also have a game at Plymouth on Tuesday. Right. A lot of road games uh, on the schedule this year. Yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of uh, sparse at uh, at Bob Copeland, but we do have. Uh, hopefully, if the weather cooperates, I think it's supposed to get a little better. We got Thursday and Friday next week. Where we'll be uh, covering some games there as they go Pioneer and uh, Culver Academy. First conference game is April seventeenth. That's less than two weeks from when uh, yeah. when the defending sectional champion Southwood Knights come to town. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's when we know uh, Valley. They played one game. Against or, uh, they played one game against Northfield and won eight to six. Uh, so, uh, but they had a game against Fairfield 
uh, that, and they lost that one. Excuse me, they played two games. Lost to beat Northfield, then lost to Fairfield, fifteen to nothing. They've been on spring break this week. Uh, Cast and baseball has not played a game yet. Yeah. Uh, Pioneer baseball has not played a game yet. Looking forward to seeing Coach Hardy's team mm-hmm. uh, play. Had a had a really nice year last year. And how? Again, but again, Pioneers in that tough two A sectional with Rochester and Bremen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Winnemac baseball again. Uh, Coach Hendricks back in charge there. Pretty experienced. Uh, you know, they were young last year. This will be a much more experienced team this year. Uh, curious to see how they do. Uh, that's a tough sectional. They, you know, they can travel to North Judson for their sectional. Uh, we'll see how they do, especially kind of see how they develop, especially in the pitching department. That's kind of mm-hmm. what I'm curious to see with Winnemac. With Argus, I saw them play last week against LaVille. Uh, this is a team, I talked with Joe Kinney, he said, he thinks they'll have a little more pitching depth this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like Willie Bereni uh, as a starting pitcher. Um, Boyd Paul is going to play some shortstop for them, and he's going to mm-hmm. pitch a little bit. Uh, like him. Uh, Jackson well, Kindig, I think, pitches. Jackson Kindig yeah. is, I think he might be their ace, but he's also probably their best center fielder. And then uh, I like the young, uh, some young, younger kids like Brady Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jamin Trump, I think, is going to play a, play a big factor as well. He can pitch a little bit. I think he's also a catcher. I think and they've played about the most games of anybody, haven't they? Haven't they played three games? E- yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which isn't saying much, but that's more than a lot of teams have played. Yeah. Uh, I talked. Joe Kinney said he likes his team defensively, mm-hmm. but I think it's going to be uh, they. Str- you know, Laville had a couple of really nice pitchers, but he said we've got to be able to hit velocity. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, he goes, we we didn't seem like we were ready in the batter's box. We've got to be more ready yeah. and compete a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, Culver, I'm really excited about Culver with the two McEwen brothers back in the mound. Um, this is a, this a mole, ba- mole bash. This is a, a they have a chance to really uh, compete in the Hoosier North this yeah. year. I think still, I, I think, still young, but they're they're getting some experience. Yeah, so, I mean they're, they're yeah. still young, but I think yeah. I really like the, the job Coach Pazin did last year as a first yeah. year coach, and I think this is Shane Lowry is on that coaching staff, and I mm-hmm. I like that you know the, this team if they keep working at it, I really like their chances uh, of of even competing in that sectional. They're gonna have a a, a good year, but it's it's gonna, progress is gonna be slow though because it's a tough conference. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that covers the baseball. Uh, uh, Lady Lady Zebra's softball team, obviously, you know, they had some big graduations. They got some big shoes to fill from last year, but they've got a great group of freshmen coming in. They had a great group of younger players last year, so they they got some pretty good experience to go with these young kids. And, boy, you had, uh, you know, Aubrey Wilson, we talked about her on the basketball f- uh, floor, and, she started off her uh, softball career with a bang, didn't she? Rochester had four hits in their eight to two loss to Mishawaka in the one game they played. She had three of the four hits. She mm. had a triple and two doubles. Yeah, a triple in her first, her first ever at varsity bat. at bat. Yeah. the ball just jumps off her bat. Mm. Uh, you can see that. But again, it, they're just very, very young. I mean, the first six spots in the batting order were sophomore, freshman, 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 mm. freshman. Mm-hmm. Did I say five freshmen? Yeah. So uh, uh, Aubrey Miller's leading off. Uh, but again, uh, you've got and then you've got Wilson. You've got uh, uh, Braylon Hunter has been hitting third in the batting order. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jaden Field is going to get a lot of time, uh, and then Medina uh, Harding is another freshman who's going to be a key part of this team. So we'll see how they develop. I, I talked with Coach Jim Coleman after that eight to two loss to Mishawaka. He said, "He goes, I'm encouraged by this team. He goes, that was a good Mishawaka team with a good pitcher who struck out 14, Kihada." Ramirez Camila R- Ramirez Quijado struck out 14, but he goes, uh, you know, we, I mean, Rochester was leading that game two to nothing after the second inning. Just we'll have to find a way to get their bat on the ball against tough pitching. Yeah, uh, that's gonna be part of it too. But uh, you know, I mean, Dara Strasser is a good hitter. She was flexed. I mean, because they just have that many good hitters. Mm-hmm. So again, they're gonna be very versatile defensively. Uh, Aubrey Wilson can play shortstop or catcher. Jaden Field can play catcher or third base. Braylon Hunter can play most anywhere in the diamond. She played right field and shortstop. We saw them. Um, Miley Heinzman can play most anywhere in the diamond, second base, right anywhere in the outfield. Uh, Mia Hadeshell was a first baseman when we saw her. Then she came in and she pitched. Bria Rensberger, no doubt about her velocity and her spin. It's just a matter of can she find home plate. Yeah, I think she walked four or five, but Bria has a chance to be an outstanding pitcher. Yeah, uh, It looks like... 
I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of kind of like tag teaming on the mound where Bria maybe pitches the first four or five innings of a game and then Mia pitches the last two or vice versa. Yeah. So they uh, obviously haven't gotten a lot of uh, time uh, on the field. Right, it's last been pretty three games, like yeah. LaVille, Triton, and Plymouth all rained out. Uh, hopefully have them back at home on uh, Tuesday when they host Winnemac. Obviously, you know, a huge rivalry between Rochester and Winnemac. Sectional opponents uh, mm-hmm. possibly as well. And Winnemac yeah. coming off of a, a big win against Valley. So that's going to be an interesting one. And then they got Logan Sport coming to town on, on Wednesday. So yeah. a couple of really big key non-conference but big key games coming up here early after not really having a whole lot of time outside the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um Speaking of Winnemac Valley, you know, that was, uh, you know, Dalen Buzzard did what Dalen Buzzard does, but uh, somehow Winnemac was able to get that win. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's an impressive, you know, for Coach Belcher. Uh, I want to get over there and see that field. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've seen pictures of it, you know, brand new field there for uh, Winnemac at the high school. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something that we've been kind of hoping that Rochester would be able to do. You know, obviously mm-hmm. the softball diamond over at Fansler Field. It would be so nice, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a, a community event when there's baseball, softball going on at the same time. Yeah, which they are are a lot mm-hmm. of times that they're doing that, mm-hmm. but they're clear across town. Yeah, and you know maybe not as close like Elkhart Christian mm-hmm. where you got foul balls going into the mm-hmm. other field, but uh, it it does give a a nice you know feel to the campus. Yeah, when they're together like that. Yeah, with Winnemac, they've got a uh, obviously some veteran players, players like Maggie Smith. Um, but that Corinne Combs, who was just a beast at the plate, was in last year's sectional. Yeah, she's back. But the, I'm really looking forward to seeing that freshman pitch, Adriana Hall. Okay, very good young pitcher for Valley. Dalen Bussard. Uh, what can you say about Dalen? She's she's only gotten better after another year of experience. But can Valley hit? New coach Brian Barger takes over. Uh, second stint as coach after leaving like 20 years ago and hmm. i mean he's he's a licensed umpire umpired all these years and i got back into coaching hmm. so i'm really looking forward to meeting him and seeing how his team plays but again uh kids like anna shock uh kind of de- stepping into big roles i mean boy valley was hit hard by graduation yeah. lose maddie smith molly moriarty corinna styles uh aubrey bowers uh a lot of kids to graduation yeah yeah from a sectional championship team uh we talked about cast unfortunately that can't Cast and they won their first game against Carroll, thirteen to nothing. When, when was that? That like was a month ago, uh, March twenty first. That was like two <laughs> weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, their game against Couts at Couts tonight was rained out. And they hopefully, canceled it. Hopefully, they'll get that game in. The last time Cast and Couts met, not that long ago, they met in the semi state at Frankfurt last year, and Cast yeah. won nine to nothing. It'll be interesting to see how they do in the rematch. Who will be Cast's number two pitcher? Right. Uh, we know Addison Zimpleman's going to be the number one pitcher. Uh, we see that uh, Maddie Douglas has been playing right field. Uh, Alexa Finke, who played mostly right field last year, playing center field this year. And Miley Rude, who I, I really liked her last year, I'm mm-hmm. uh, going to play with some left field this year, see how she does there. And McKenna Middleton, who saw mostly time in left field last year, going to play some second base this year. Okay. So let's see how McKenna yeah. does there. But yeah. otherwise, a lot of the same names. It looks like uh, Kylie Logan's moved up to the number three spot in the batting order to give some protection for Zimpleman and Scales. And then... Uh, you know, hinder lighter in the number nine spot, that second leadoff spot where she was just so dangerous. Yeah. Looking looking forward to some big things again out of them. I mean, uh, you know, obviously they've got some big shoes to fill with uh, Kinsey graduating. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that question mark, who is the number two? Because, mm-hmm. you know, Addison can't pitch every inning mm-hmm. of, the, of the season. She can pitch a lot of them, but yeah. they got to have somebody that can come in and give her some relief, especially when the weather starts getting warmer. Yeah. So, be interested to see there. Um, I know Argus and Culver. I don't know if Culver have they had a game. I think uh, Culver had a scrimmage. Yeah, they might. They might have had a scrimmage against Peru the other day, but I. They have not had a game yet. Yeah. Uh, so they've had a couple of rainouts. So we don't know. We. I think Argus got one game in maybe early, early, but. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So just you know a lot of stuff with the weather. So. Mm-hmm. Hopefully next week we can get some some better forecasts and, yeah. and get some games in. Yeah, Briley Elliott uh, is one of the stars on that Argus team, along with uh, Morgan Barkas. I think play does she play some softball or I? Mm, or, I don't know if she's still playing. Yeah, but, Bri- uh, I know Briley Elliott. The Stackhouses are going to be Briley Elliott. The Stackhouse, yeah, yeah, the Stackhouses. Stack Ava and uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, what's Ava's little little sister? 
the 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 youngest stack house, the younger mm-hmm. stack house, I think is a freshman this year. She's mm-hmm. gonna be uh, she's gonna be a good pitcher. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be a really good pitcher. So. Yeah. Uh, Pioneer, looking forward to seeing them. I'll be at that three way doubleheader at Carroll tomorrow. It'll be Rochester and Carroll in the first game. Rochester and Pioneer in the second game. Pioneer and Carroll in the third game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see what again pitching was just the big problem for Pioneer last year. But mm-hmm. if Lois Layers. Uh, well, we hear she is, then that will that will solve a lot of problems for Gabby Thomas and her team. Yeah, yeah. I I remember seeing her pitch with the junior high as a sixth mm-hmm. grader, and she was impressive back then. So if she's anything like that, but uh, yeah, you know, it, it's always tough as a freshman coming in and you know having mm-hmm. that uh, you know that burden on your shoulders. But uh, she does kind of have that pedigree. Yeah, she'll have a veteran catcher to throw to in Casey Webb. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of speed on the bases as well. Yeah, Addie Kripe still there as a senior this year. Yeah. I mean, she's just a powerful hitter. And uh, Kylie Attinger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, Emma Sells. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that. So yeah, I think that's uh, yeah. We that's... covered a lot. We covered a lot of ground there. Uh, we don't know about track yet. I don't think. But, Oh, there have been a few indoor meets. I don't know if anybody's raced outdoors yet. Yeah, Pioneer did have one early at Carroll. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's, a lot of those have been canceled as well. You know when they're canceling track meets, the weather's bad. Yeah. Because they, they usually run those. Yeah, you know. they're pretty hardy. Yeah. So Tennis and golf, we don't know yet. Uh, Rochester was supposed to play North Judson in girls tennis last night. That got postponed to next Thursday. Yeah, supposed to be at uh, Glenn tomorrow, so we'll mm. see if that, that Yeah, the John Glenn invites tomorrow, yeah, which yep. Rochester won that event last year. Yeah. And then uh, Valley, boy, Valley Girls Tennis, really excited with the Ackermans, the, the coaching job that they've, they, they've done. Yeah. They really transformed that program. Kerrigan Callahan, a number one singles, going to have a great year, I think. Uh, I heard they had like 18 girls out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... I think Rochester's numbers were up, too. So. Yeah. New sectional alignment in girls' tennis this year. Ro- Rochester's still traveling to Culver Academy for their sectional, but it's now a six-team sectional instead of a four-teamer. Okay. Rochester, Culver Academy, North Judson, Knox, Plymouth, and Triton. So add Plymouth and Triton to the mix. Okay. So Plymouth was hosting their own sectional there. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Wow. And, of Our- course, Valley's still in that five-teamer with Warsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. All right, so we'll wrap it up here for this and afternoon. We're going to have a great, we're gonna have a great year in golf, too. Yeah. Noah Riffle and J.R. McLaughlin on Rochester's team, Valley with Wes Parker. Obviously, they're going to miss Greg Miller a lot, but Wes Parker's back. Uh, Kasten's going to miss A.J. Day. But numbers, Kasten's got eight kids came out for golf. Did That's they? great. Yeah. Coach Jeremy Rentschler's taken over, yeah. and kids are excited to play there. Yeah. Fun stuff. And uh, like I said, hopefully the weather will get better. Yeah. We'll talk some more sports next week. And, uh if the weather cooperates, we will be uh, coming to you live on Tuesday from Fansler with a uh, big one with the Rochester Zebras hosting the uh, Winnemac Warriors and have a couple of softball games on deck Tuesday and Wednesday and then a couple of baseball games on Thursday and Friday for you next week, hopefully. I'm working on some trivia already for <laughs> baseball season. I, th- I thought maybe that was a one-year thing. So, <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will be uh, putting the uh, stories that go along with the all RTC teams out on the blog later this evening as well. So you can catch those on the blog at rtc4sports.com uh, or you can go to RTC4 and then just click on the uh, Balti's sports blog. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, we'll see you again next week.